I had an old friend, uh, Bill Parker, who's dead now. He used to teach uh, economic history at uh, Yale University. And Bill used to say, the, the older you get, the less you write and the more you publish. I get up in a year, I'm, I'm starting to become a very prolific publisher. And I want to uh, tell you today about uh, a couple of books uh, and uh, my journal a little bit too. I never like to, <coughs> to go anywhere without my journal the way some people won't go without the American Express card. And uh, uh, the Independent Review, this is the uh, issue <laughs> on the newsstand. You may have noticed it. Uh, I believe I can say without fear of contradiction that uh, no other journal uh, of serious political economy has ever had a cover quite like this. <laughs> and if that tells you you can expect things a little out of the ordinary from my journal, you're correct. <laughs> so if you're not already a subscriber, uh, get with it. The price is the right, and uh, I think you'll enjoy the reading. Uh, many of the people who are affiliated with the Mises Institute, or <coughs> are friends of the Mises Institute, have written for uh, the Independent Review, and, uh, including Tom DiLorenzo and Mark Thornton, just to, uh, to seize people uh, within arm's reach of me here. Uh, but uh, many of the other people who will be participating in this conference have also written. Uh, <coughs> I think it would be wrong to describe the Independent Review as an Austrian journal, but it, uh, its editor is certainly uh, uh, one who uh, is closely identified with the Austrian school nowadays, and uh, is very uh, much open to uh, good writing by Austrians. So I want to tell you about the uh, a couple of books. Uh, one that is about to be published, it's not yet published, and so all I have to show you is some pre publication proofs. Uh, this book is called Rethinking Green uh, Alternatives to Environmental Bureaucracy, and uh, it's edited by me and by Carl Close, who uh, works at the Independent Institute. And the book consists of um, uh, a number of essays, it's 450 pages long, so there, there uh, is a lot of material here. But all of these essays were published previously in the Independent Review. Uh, it turns out that without quite trying, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, as it were, focused on, I don't know, six or eight uh, topics uh, in the journal over the years, and when we look back, we see that if we brought all of these things on a particular topic together, it would make a nice collection. So that's what we've done here uh, with essays dealing with uh, environmental matters, and particularly uh, the government's environmental policy. Uh, environmental policy, uh, I don't have to explain to any of you, I'm sure, is one of the uh, battle uh, fronts uh, in the fight for liberty in this country and environmentalism uh, as, uh, as it's represented by so-called environmentalists, uh, people who, who describe themselves that way in public, uh, is a kind of manifestation of, uh, of collectivism and, and tyranny uh, as it has uh, come to be most influential in the wake of the breakup of, of old-fashioned uh, Marxist-type leftism, which now flourishes only on university campuses. But environmentalism flourishes all over the country. Many ordinary people actually think they are environmentalists and support environmental policies of all sorts. So that's, that's why Congress keeps rolling this stuff out. Uh, and the Environmental Protection Agency is uh, one of the most egregious regulatory agencies uh, we, we now have to contend with in this country. So these essays deal with a variety of environmental policy questions, uh, the Endangered Species Act, global warming, uh, oil drilling, uh, uh, you name it. And uh, many of the people who are friends of or associated with the Mises Institute uh, have essays in here 
uh, two excellent pieces here by Bob Nelson, who's going to be giving one of the featured addresses at this conference, appear in the book. A uh, very nice Austrian uh, paper by John Braitlin uh, is included. And Roy Cordato has an extremely hardcore Austrian uh, presentation as part of a debate with P.J. Hill on uh, so-called market-based environmentalism. So uh, I urge you to have a look at it if you have any interest in this uh, topic at all. This will be uh, available for sale uh, very quickly within the next month. Now let me spend the rest of my time uh, telling you about uh, another book, uh, which is called Against Leviathan, uh, a subtitle of Government Power and a Free Society, and this is uh, uh, my own work uh, entirely. And uh, the book is a collection of uh, essays, uh, almost all of which were previously published. There is, uh, I think, one one a substantial paper on the FDA, which was never published before, although I, I gave it at a conference a few years ago in Germany. But uh, these essays go back as far as, uh, I think, 1981 uh, and come up almost to the present day. Uh, the bulk of them were written in the past a decade. Uh, and many of them were first written for uh, what I call my et cetera column uh, in the Independent Review. Uh, however, everything in this book has been rewritten, uh, polished, updated, corrected, so nothing appears here exactly as it appeared originally. So it's not simply a bunch of previously published pieces laid end to end. And uh, I have selected uh, for this collection uh, only uh, essays that I think are accessible to a general <coughs> audience of intelligent readers. There's nothing included here that I wrote specifically for my colleagues in economic history or in economics. Uh, uh, there, there's no, no technicalities of any kind in here, nothing especially esoteric, so I think everything here is accessible. And uh, I've tried to, 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 to bring together the about 40 pieces, all of which I hope tell us something about the nature of, of government power. That's why the subtitle is what it is. And uh, just to give you a flavor of uh, what I think is the overarching theme of these essays, uh, I'll, I will just read you a paragraph here from early in the introduction. Uh, if I had to use a single word to describe what is fundamentally wrong with government today, I would use the word fraud. Certainly nowadays, and, and perhaps in every age, government is not what it claims to be. Competent protective, and just. And it is what it claims not to be, bungling, menacing, and unjust. In actuality, it is a vast web of deceit and humbug, and not for a good purpose either. Indeed, its true purposes are as reprehensible as its noble claims are false. Its stock in trade is pretense. The velvet glove of its countless claims of benevolence scarcely conceals its iron fist of violence and threats of more violence. It wants to be loved, but it will settle for being feared. The one thing it will not do is simply leave us alone. So, um, Sometimes uh, uh, catalogs, I've noticed, uh, such as Laissez Faire's catalog, uh, put this book under a heading called Political Philosophy. <laughs> and I'd like to correct that because I, I am certainly not a philosopher and this is not a book of philosophy. Uh, this is a book uh, that specializes, as I have for my entire career, in being concrete and bringing facts to bear. Uh, along with some logic, uh, to make arguments. And uh, it, it's much more historical 
uh, than it is uh, philosophical by far. Uh, it, it's more analytical than it is philosophical. Uh, and yet again, I think it, it is accessible, not esoteric. So uh, the essays range across a, a number of, uh, of areas. Uh, I have sections on, on welfare statism, which deals with various redistributionist uh, policies and programs, such as the Social Security and, and Medicare. I have one section called Our Glorious Leaders, which is uh, <laughs> a little more clear-eyed look at the people who purport to be uh, our, 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 our political leaders and fetters. <laughs> one section is called Despotism, Soft and Hard, and this runs from the Food and Drug Administration's regulation uh, up through the drug war and, uh, and related matters, such as the fact that uh, the authorities in this country have now clamped millions of people in prisons and jails, many of them for things that ought never to have been crimes in the first place. Uh, one section is called Economic Disgraces, and this runs across a variety of uh, policies and programs that are, that are simply based on economic humbug. Uh, and a large section is called the political economy of crisis. If you know anything about my previous <coughs> work, you'll, you'll recognize that these essays are, are all, as it were, uh, sequels to what I wrote in my book, Crisis and Leviathan, and now almost 20 years ago. Uh, one little section is called Retreat of the State, question mark. And there I take up a number of views that uh, have, have been propounded in recent years by people who, who, who see all kinds of constraints bearing down on the modern state and, and therefore <coughs> suppose that it's on the run. Uh, uh, perhaps my vision is faulty, but as I look at it, it doesn't look as if it's on the run at all to me. Uh, in fact, I think these arguments for why it's on the run are, are extremely problematical, and I say why in this section. And finally, there's a, a section called Review of the Troops, which consists of a, a number of substantial review essays dealing with what uh, other people have written about uh, important matters in political economy, uh, uh, ranging across the books such as Bert Folson's work on uh, the capitalists, good and bad, uh, and uh, uh, Mansur Olson's uh, work, especially his the final work before he died, uh, on the nature of the state. So, uh, if you're interested in these kinds of topics, I think there's something here for you. Uh, and if you've seen these essays before and think, oh, I've already read that, remember, they're all a little different now, and many of them have been brought up to date, so there may be something more for you here. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um.